Hello guys and welcome to episode 27 of my Total War Warhammer 2 playthrough playing as Kemri on very hard difficulty. This is the Tomb Kings DLC and today what we're going to be doing to start off is take on Quig Headtaker at the Temple of Skulls after they previously took it off us. We have King Rakash here who should make uh, short work of their army. So let's go ahead, quick save and fight it on the Balamut. I love seeing these Tomb Scorpions in battle. One thing that I was thinking about was wouldn't it be cool if like the Tomb Scorpions could like burrow under the walls or something? That would be absolutely awesome. Like it might be an effect that takes a little while but uh, I think that would be a really really cool thing to do. You could have it with like Miners for example from the Dwarves and also the Skaven of course. It's like the ability to dig under walls. Maybe undermine the walls as well um, so that they fall down. That would be cool. Like maybe sacrifice a unit as a Skaven to take down a wall. That might be a really awesome mechanic. But here we are attacking the first Skaven-like settlement that we have in a while. Skaven-style walls here with warp stone towers. Interesting. Let's uh, probably gamble for more wins. And then we shall choose a gate to attack, probably the center one. So let's just get our tomb guard lined up. We'll get our skeleton archers lined up. I'm going to have my tomb scorpions actually go for each gate on either side. And then we shall have our lord here, um, King Rakash, go for the gate with also our lich priest. And the screaming skull catapults can also go for the gate, although I'm not sure how far I need to have them back. We put them like there. Actually, no, a bit further forwards. Okay, they should be able to hit the gates from there. Block of Jaff, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them. Uh, we need to keep our horses out of the way, um, as I don't want them to be attacked, so I might put them in the corner somewhere. Okay, good. Let's start the battle. And it looks like they are going to man all of the walls, which is kind of annoying. But let's just go for the gatehouse attack straight away. Take down the middle one as well. I'll get the Screaming Skull catapults to hit the gatehouse and uh, we will get our men to start climbing the walls. Let me just make sure that I have them climbing up the way I want to. Probably like so, actually. Hmm. Think like that, except from... I want to have a unit that doesn't go through and goes on that side instead. I think that's fine. Okay, good. Right, let's make sure these skeleton archers are moving forwards. Oh, look at those screaming skulls. They're so damn awesome. We also have these chariots here. Maybe we could have those hit the gatehouse. Oh, looks like our horsemen are being attacked. Uh, let's get into uh, this gap in the walls. Wow, those scorpions do quite a lot of damage to the gate. Oh, they look so damn cool. Okay, let's have the flock of Jaff come down into these clam rats. Because otherwise those are just going to keep hitting my skeleton and archers going to put these off skirmish mode. Keep them on fire at will. Good, not bad. These Kepra guards should absolutely demolish Skaven. Oh, we've broken through both of the gates. I like it. Let's come into those storm vermin with halberds. Same on this side. Oh, we haven't quite got through that gate yet. Get in there. There we go. Storm vermin with halberds are unfortunately quite good against my scorpions, but my scorpions do have bonus versus infantry, so that's nice. Oh, that rolling attack was awesome. Very cool. Okay, right, time to get the chariots in then. Get the chariots to roll in this side. I hope those Screaming Skull catapults aren't doing damage to my own units. That would be tragic. 
from majesty did my dude get through the gate he did <laughs> we didn't even destroy the gate he still managed to get through fair enough and this gives like fast protection to maybe some of the tomb scorpions over there oh wow okay clam rats have spawned up in these horsemen those tomb scorpions are going at it love it right let's bring in the flock of jaff over here we'll try and bomb out those guys and we need to make sure that all of my archers are actually firing because at the moment they're not let's target these clam rats Oh, look how much damage this Tomb Scorpions do on their own. It's absolutely fantastic. Alright, bombs away. Come down into those with a block of jaff. Nice. Broken them very easily. I uh, will push towards the gate where we can. And we'll have a horseman run in here, I think. Oh, God. They got clam rats on top of my tomb scorpions. That's just annoying. Yep, they're gone. <laughs> Stupid Skaven. That clam rat's ability is just pain in the bum. Alright, looks like we've taken out the majority of the units on the walls, which is good. It didn't last very long. Time the Kepra Guard take out the Skaven Slaves, and uh, we'll come down here to help our leader out, who is kind of suffering at the moment. We'll use Potion of Healing. Uh, these chariots should come help them out. I tried to break them off previously, I think. Good Jap is suffering a bit here. Other little things. Where's my other tomb scorpion? Where's it gone? Oh, there it is. Okay. Yes, chariots. Move down the Skaven. That's what we like to see. I don't know how this the Skaven or the Scorpions even come like they get to the point where they're not attacking anything and it seems a bit silly. Maybe it's just because like units retreat and then come back. I don't know. Gonna kill those poison wind globadiers if we can. And we'll make sure to target the clan rats. Alright, we're on second realm of souls tier. Another unit's been wiped out. <laughs> I think that was my horseman. Seems a bit silly that we're losing entire units in this battle, but oh well. Right, this is Queek Headtaker. Um, I think that's why my Lord took so much damage. Just get our guys up onto walls, then they can't be attacked. I feel like if my Scorpions take out these Clam Rat Spears with shields, though, that uh, Queek should just run away. Unless he's unbreakable, in which case it might take a little while to kill him. No, he's not unbreakable. Okay. Gonna make sure my leader doesn't die. We don't want Rakash to get wrecked. Good. Let's just watch these scorpions go to work. 
I think it looks just so awesome. Like, the animations are just so damn cool. <laughs> How are they ever supposed to be that? I mean, <laughs> seriously. The scorpions were being wrecked by the gutter runners, but uh, just go and demolish them with a charge. Then the battle there for a close victory. So yeah, we lost uh, a few units that I probably didn't want to lose. Oh, our leech priest died. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I find this Lich Priest so awful. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm just being stupid with them, but they always seem to die. <laughs> I They're just really weak. Skeleton Horseman and the Screaming Skull Catapult are both gone. We'll just occupy that. Okay, cool. Let's then level that up. And I don't need the obelisk here. So I guess we will just sort of go towards the open graves. And we'll re recruit this turn. So we want the Screaming Skull Catapult back. And I also want. Actually, that's going to take five turns. What? <laughs> okay. I'll just go for a couple of carrion for now. I'll replace them later on. Yes, we lost our Lich Priest. <laughs> good start, good start, guys, to this episode. Never mind. Uh, we'll max out Stone Sentinels to get the extra weapon strength for the uh, Scorpions. And these Scorpions are going to be pretty damn strong, honestly. Right, time for Tetra to take uh, Temple Avenue of Gold. I'm just going to encircle that. And what we're going to do is have King Thu Tap catch up so that he can reinforce because it'd be good to have him get some experience. 43 losses, we'll occupy that. Good stuff. Okay, let's maybe change around these open graves. I don't know, maybe we need them. Uh, we're definitely going to upgrade this to the sandstone walls just to make sure that that's good to go nice we are absolutely demolishing clan moors now and it's good that Zlatlan is being attacked by the uh, warband of the crow although I doubt they'll be successful in actually winning that battle etc the imperishable what ceremonial bandages that's 15 missile resistance then we're going to keep going with conqueror and then we'll go towards like Hard to hit, I guess. You just want him to be like really good in combat. Right, King Wakaf, uh, he needs to continue to chase down this chap. And it looks like we we're able to attack them. Awesome. So that's going to delete the Pirates of Sartosa. I think those organs. And there we go, nice. So we've taken Sartosa ourselves. Um, that will be positive public order once the obelisk is finished. We've got King Setup zooming down here towards this treasure. Also going to pick up this treasure while we're at it. And uh, where's King Wakaf now going to go? I, th I was thinking of heading them over towards the other books, wasn't I? We could also start heading them down towards uh, maybe this book of Nagash. I think we might do that first. So we'll have him travel south. Because we're re-recruiting another army anyway that can then join King Setup in heading you know, to the west. Alright, let's make sure we continue to assault the units of this rogue army because I probably want to take that out as well while I'm at it. Uh, King Thutep can move forward a little bit more. And we're definitely sort of surrounding the remaining Clan Moor's army here. 
And uh, then the last two settlements that they have, I think, are Nahuantol here and uh, Zlatlan. Right, let's uh, have a look at this commandment. Probably just want to go for the tax rate and construction cost reduction. Good. So we currently have the Worship of Asfaf here, which is helping us with the uh, Skaven Corruption and the Public Order. And then we have also Scrag Hole and the Southern Jungles, which is also doing the same. And that's giving us positive Public Order there now. Uh, we can change those once the Corruption has reduced quite a lot. Currently it's reducing by minus 5% per turn, which is kind of nice. That's all of our armies moved anyway. Uh, let's move on to the next turn. Now one thing I will want to do is sort of hold on to these Canopic Jars and I think once we get to like 300 we can create like epic gear. So I'm going to try and do that where I can. So if the coast is going to be attacked we're just going to auto resolve that. Uh, they just sacked it. Okay. Let's just speed things up, as there isn't really anyone else who we are at war with, other than Clan Pestilence. <laughs> okay, so your ally declares war on Clan Pestilence. Uh, they are allied with the Vampire Coast. So we're now at war with both Clan Pestilence and the Vampire Coast. Maybe I want to have a look at what they're doing. Probably not. Your ally has been attacked, the Dune Kingdoms, by the Snuff Snatchers. Okay, well that sucks, because they're going to come straight onto Kuizotl. But I didn't want to break that alliance. We do have the army coming down anyway, and uh, we'll continue to use our assault units here. He means nothing. Max out that now. I'd rather eat Good. So yeah, they declared war on the Team Kings. It pulled me in to the fight, and now they're going to attack me. How annoying is that? Uh, we'll have uh, King Alakash just uh, zoom down to Serpent Coast, and uh, we will fix this up. Uh, then we want to have Setra move up and attack this rebel army. Let's just sort of resolve that. And we'll take this Kenobi Jars. And we're also going to march Setra towards the Golden Tower. So we've done the loop. Uh, we've taken control of all of these settlements. We didn't end up losing Teotihuacan. So that's okay. Right. What are we going to do with King Thutep though? That's the question. I think I might bring him back around the other way. Um, back around towards like you attack. So that we can maybe attack Zlatlan after the Warband of the Crow like fail, maybe, I don't know, they will, but we'll see. Um, let's continue to upgrade the uh, Sepulcher here, yep, we'll do it here as well. Need to make sure that we're getting rid of that uh, Skaven Corruption sooner than later. Uh, we have a Commandment available now in the Shifting Mangrove Coastline, so we're going to go for uh, the Worship of Asaf again. Asaf. And uh, then we have Solomon Upgrade available. Not sure if I want to do that at Temple Avenue of Gold. I guess we could. Uh, it's probably more important to like upgrade the Golden Tower, although that's going to be attacked the by Morlock most likely before I can even build anything there. Fortunately, Kozotl has walls, so that's going to be under less of a threat from Zogoth than uh, maybe anything else. Uh, Rahushen uh, has leveled up. Let's uh, continue with Woundmaker. And we have a settlement upgrade. Let's just let's just build that while I'm here. And uh, I might also upgrade Scrag Hole as well, just so that I can get this to a level three walls. All right, in terms of the mortuary cult, we can craft ourselves the Crook and Fail Flail of Radiance. Which gives us the Bound Spell of Banishment, which is a Vortex spell. Let's go ahead and craft that. 
Not sure who I'm going to give it to, though. Um, that's used up 300 Kenobic jars. Let's see. We could give it to Rakash, maybe. We could even give it to Setra, but I think what we're going to do, we'll give it to Rakash for now. Mm, which I'm not so sure. Who's got the better army? Like, I just want to make a really OP army. So, not Setra. Uh, maybe Thutep, but his army's pretty weak. Maybe Rakash, but I don't really feel like it. I don't know. Maybe Setup here. Setup's got a pretty, pretty decent army. 1,500 from that. We could also maybe give it to Wakaf. I think I might actually give it to Wakaf. Yeah, because I think that would work well with the Ashabti lineup that we have. I cannot. The Vortex won't hit them as hard as it would um, places with more um, or armies with more units like bigger units in them. So we'll go and give him the Crook and Flail of Radiance and uh, we also gave him the Cultist of Arisian there. Or Assyrian, I think it is. Okay, let's move on to the next turn. Speed up the end turn. I think the Court of Libaris uh, is nearly finished with the Order of Law Masters. They're very, very weak. But I kind of feel like they've bitten off more than they can chew with the Clan Pestilence. Are they going to attack Golden Tower, surely? Okay. Maybe we play this out because I feel like this is a battle that we have the potential of winning. It's going to be hard, though. Actually, maybe not with the Rat Ogres, but we'll quick save it and fight it on the battle nonetheless. Maybe uh, leadership will go in our favour. Depends how much work I can do with the Nehekara Horsemen. A lot of their units are Skaven Slaves. So they will have inherently low leadership. It's those uh, Death Globe bombardiers and the Rat Ogres that I'm really worried about. But hopefully we can just hold them in the choke though. Alright, let's start it. I'll get my horseman up to the right. And the Death Globe bombardiers are standing up in front. Hmm. I probably don't want to have my leader in front. Well, especially if they're going to spawn clan rats up my bum. Okay. Let's make sure these Nehekara horsemen get into position. I might even be able to take out some night runners already. I right, just get my Nehekara horsemen. Not Nehekara horsemen. Warriors there to do the job. Uh, we need to make sure that these archers are targeting the death globes. Might even be worth falling back a bit with the spearmen just to sort of delay the time it's going to take for the death globes to get in range. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Yeah, this is going to suck. Those death globes are going to do a lot of damage if I let them. Oh, there's another clan rats, of course there is. Uh, I guess the only other way of doing it is maybe charging forwards. Oh, look at the damage. That's disgusting. Right, we crashed into the night runners back there, which is good. Uh, we should do quite a lot of damage pretty quickly. Uh, but I'm more worried about these Death Globe Bombardiers, so I'm actually going to come and destroy them. And maybe we should have sort of resolved it, because this is a kind of a massacre. <laughs> uh, some of the Skaven Spears have already left. Ooh. Altering their own there. Just going to crash into those Death Globe Bombardiers and try and kill off as many as we can. 
Right, we've out reached the Realm of Souls tier 1, but they're just constantly spawning clan rats. I think the auto resolve maybe doesn't like count account for the uh for the clan rats. And therefore I probably should have auto resolved that. Ah, oh, that sucks. I thought I'd be able to do more work with the uh horsemen. But never mind. Doesn't really matter. We were still gonna lose the settlement anyway. I just wanted to see if I could do the damage. And maybe like without the clan rats, we might have been able to win, but the fact they can spawn that many, it's just kind of annoying. They only sacked it, we didn't actually lose a settlement in the end. So that's okay, it's gonna leave us in a pretty good position actually to just wipe out that army. I don't think clan pestilence is gonna really come for us right now. I'm just gonna speed it up and see what happens. And we do actually need to be at war with the Vampire Coast in order to, you know, win the campaign, get the last Kenobi jar, I think. So that's worked out kind of well. But lost team hidden knowledge. I think uh, we should unearth the chamber to get the extra Kenobi jars. That's definitely important. Warband of the Crow did die and didn't take out. Uh, the Skaven, so that sucks. Make sure Prince Sekov continues to assault units. And success again, that's good. We'll start leveling up training. And now it's time for Setra and King Rakash to take out this army. Uh, let's just have Setra be the backup. And we'll have King Rakash to zoom in there and do the damage. Okay, they retreated. The of course they did. Moves. My faith in still able to attack, so we'll just have him finish them off. Cool. We're back up to 100 Kenobic Jars, and uh, we will march towards the last couple settlements of Clan Moors. Good. So we're nearly getting positive public order at uh, the Jungle of the Gods. We'll upgrade to Yotikwa. I'll fix up the Golden Tower. And what else can we do? We will possibly upgrade another building, another one of the military buildings. I'm not too sure. Alright, Cetra can finish Kenobic Jar Horde, I think while we're at it and uh, what I'm gonna do is then go up towards like blame master and melee defense and all that kind of stuff get tomb strike and then maybe give him full plate armor now over my dead body might be quite nice for the extra speed as well but he's not on his chariot anymore so that's not so much a problem but there we go I uh, might just get the walls upgraded at Bagar while we're at it, and uh, if there's anywhere else I can upgrade walls, then I'll do that with the last remaining cash. Like here, at Al Hake. There we go. Good. Right, King Setup can pick up that treasure. And we'll get the Captain's Chest, and that's going to give us campaign line of sight. That's not really what we want. The best one's like reduced upkeep. I think that's easily the best one, but actually there's no point in having that because with the Tomb King, so it doesn't matter. Maybe just uh, one that gives us loads of gold. That, that's a nice treasure to come across. Like a 10,000 gold one would be cool. But let's just have our army come on land, like set up, come on land. He'll join King Jenna in heading west uh, whilst we take care of the rest of the clan moors on my continent okay um these rites how long until we got the great incantation of tra um i think we can perform it we just don't have enough funds so we'll do that maybe next turn we'll get tra's neck protect and i think we can go take elven ruins because 
that's not actually controlled by anyone. I think that's not even Clan Wars. Uh, let's see about armor though. Um, we need 200 or 300 to get decent armor. What does Scorpion armor do? Effects plus 22 percent damage resistance. So it gives us like ward save. If hit points are greater than 50 percent, that is. That's a crazy armor. That's very very nice. This one's also pretty good. The armor of dawn. And uh, this one's got uh, regeneration. Oh, the armor of eternity. That's definitely very nice. I like regeneration a lot. It seems to work very well on like high health units for sure. Okay, um, we have the cash to upgrade this, so I think I might just do it, and um, we will end the turn there. So Clan Moors probably don't even have an army left at this point, I don't think. So it's only a matter of time until we wipe them out completely. And then I guess what we'll do is move some of the armies to the bottom of the other continent. Uh, to start attacking Clan Pestilence whilst the armies in the north head towards the Vampire Coast. we still got to deal with the Snuff Snatchers though. And negative growth in Blackua. Okay. Well. Unfortunately, guys. It has been my time. So I am actually going to leave it here. Um, next time around, we'll probably try and deal with the snuff or stuff snatchers. Um, then we'll finish off Clan Moors by taking Zlatlan. And uh, Nahuontul. And then what we'll do is uh, take the next book and the gash. That might be something we do in the next episode. And of course we'll start moving towards uh, the Vampire Coast. But that's all for now guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.